Hello, Amy. Hi there. Hi. How are you? How's your day? Oh, it's great. Great. I'm so glad to see you. I know. It's awesome to see you, too. It's been, what, like almost a month since the last time we've seen each other, right? I know. Back in the good old days with art fairs and I know, people right? being normal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right, right. I know. I so, miss that. Like, yeah, it's 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 been a crazy time, you know, and we're all adjusting to it. You know, artists, curators, um, arts dealers, gallerists, and everybody's just trying to deal with what's going on, but also prepare for the new normal that comes out of this, you know, understanding um, how digital plays a part in our art market and art world now, um, yeah. how it's affecting the working artists, and also how it's kind of opened up um, access to not only an audience that knows you, knows your work, but also a new audience. So today I wanted to, you know, I allow appreciate folks, that. Oh, yeah, always, always. Um, today I wanted to allow folks to chat with you, you know, as we do with the studio sessions, um, ask okay. you questions, um, you Great. allow you to talk about your work. Um, I've Thank seen you. some really cool pieces. Um, it's it, it, it has a very, very uh, modern art style to me. Um, I right. think it looks very cool. And um, yeah, Thank so you. let's 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 get it started. So let's okay. let's give a little background. Let everybody know uh, your background history, um, any art school or anything like that. Let's, let's, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm from Chicago, and um, my dad was an art director for books. So, mm -hmm. and he hired illustrators all the time, and he would. Uh, use my mother occasionally for an illustrator and she had been an art major, uh, mm -hmm. double major, but you know, in art. And, um, so I always grew up with art in the house and then I started painting in oils when I was like 13 mm -hmm. and I thought I would be an illustrator, but then kind of, um, special effects happened mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and I, um, I graduated with a BFA, but it was from a liberal art school. It wasn't an art school. Mm -hmm. And so I just um, tried to get a job in the video world and I was hired two days after I like oh, tried nice. my first time <laughs> and I became a um, animation assistant oh, and um, yeah, I mean, they wanted somebody who could draw, but it really didn't suit me. There's um, when you, at least back then, and I, I think now there's probably more programming, but you use a stylus similar to the kind you sign when you pay. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I really like the connection to my surface and all that. And mm -hmm. so I felt very disconnected looking at monitors and, and um, it just wasn't for me. Mm. And um, so I ended up producing for a little bit and then I quit work when I had uh, my first daughter. And then shortly after that, um, my dad got cancer and he was ill and my mother needed help. And then I had another baby. And so basically I ended up doing caretaking for like 17 years, which is quite a long time. Wow. Uh, but I, that whole time I painted, but I always painted um, a la prima because mm -hmm. I love oil paint. And um, we ended up moving to Denver a few years, uh, four years ago. And my kids had left, left the nest, and my parents had died by then. And so I took, you know, painted, and I just had been tired of painting a la prima because what happens when you go to some of these festivals or enter art shows that are still lifes and, and nude models and, mm -hmm. and uh, landscape is, is you cannot distinguish one artist from another, really. Yeah, yep. yep. And I was like where am I in these paintings? Mm -hmm. So just asking myself that question led me to start painting from memory. Mm -hmm. And I just loved what I was painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always the best feeling. <laughs> it, it, I was like, ow! And so I just, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it just made me feel like really this is what I was meant to do. And I just mm -hmm. didn't realize it till now. And just the time on my hands gave me this opportunity. So I've been painting just in this manner uh, for three years. Nice. Nice. So I, I find it interesting. Like that's 
that that animation connection is kind of like resurfacing you know and yeah. and it, the digital world is kind of bringing that back have you seen any connection to your 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 former your former life of being an animator and the way you've graduated into painting oil on canvas and just doing a uh, portraiture to where they might marry at some point well i think actually you have a point because it's all storytelling and i think when it comes down to it that's really what i like to do am i not there i see you yeah i like storytelling in my work mm -hmm. so i do think in that regard it is um there is kind of a, a thread that so runs through how has how has the current uh extra time we'll call it how has that affected, you know, the studio practice? Has it helped? Has you have you developed anything new? Have you seen anything that you want to change in your work or how has that, you know, played an impact? I have to tell you, it hasn't impacted me that much because mm -hmm. my life as an introvert in my house <laughs> painting. Oh, stay home and paint. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> so, I do I'll tell you I I super super miss going to the galleries mm -hmm. I was you know I learned so much I find out about new artists I love talking to people I I mean it's fantastic I feel lucky to live in the age of Instagram that's a huge mm -hmm. blessing I I mean we can be connected um, that way but but I do really miss going out and seeing art live you know What's the biggest thing you bring back to the studio after you visit a gallery show? Oh, I mean, I don't know that I can make a big connection, like a, mm -hmm. a direct connection, mm -hmm. but I'd say it's like jamming. Like mm -hmm. when you see something mm -hmm. really good, it mm -hmm. just makes you, it gives you like, ooh, shot of adrenaline. Now I can really oh, I want to be as good as that person. They're yeah. so great. They really inspire me, you know? Yeah. And, um, do you, do you go in and do you look at specifically, uh, the presentation or do you check out, um, you know, maybe brush strokes or maybe, um, oh, yeah. you know, maybe materials or things like that, or just like the overall scene I've heard, you know, a few artists talk about, you know, they, they don't really allow it to affect their studio practice, but they go in and look at how the gallery, you know, treats the artist or how the, oh. uh, the exhibition is set up or what's around it so that it kind of gives them a precursor to when they're in that space. Do you feel that anytime? I do. I find it all interesting. Mm -hmm. It's all information for me. I like yeah. to see how things are in the gallery. I like to see how different artists, uh, their techniques, mm -hmm. there is, it is interesting because even though it's so great to look on Instagram, there's been times when I thought somebody's work looked fantastic on Instagram and then I saw it in person and I, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, it's, it's obviously if it's out there, it's doing something. Yes. And um, I, I, but I just see so many fantastic artists. I'm just so impressed yeah. with everything that's out there. It's amazing. Yes, nice, nice. So what's what's the biggest what's the biggest thing do you think has allowed you to grow in your work? You know, from changing your uh, original Ala Prima destination or goal of creating to, mm -hmm. you know, changing more figurative, more real mm -hmm. life instead of still life, you know what I mean? And, right. Uh, right. What, what's what was the biggest uh, I guess catalyst to that transition? Uh, I really just do think it was the biggest thing was um, being in the middle of my life and mm -hmm. just like what do I want to do? Who do I want to be? What what uh, do I? what is important to me. So I, yeah. I really am painting about what is important to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think actually, because I didn't go to art school, even though I have a BFA, we didn't have the same kind of uh, conversations or very in-depth conversations about developing a voice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. more um, maybe what you would say, technical training and, and 
they were a little bit like you will develop your voice, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and uh, so. How do you think that attitude has played into your approach of, you know, taking your work to gallerists and dealers and allowing them to show your work or working, you know, with them? How has that, how has that uh, affected your approach? Uh, I really feel like a babe in the woods. Mm -hmm. Like I know nothing. Um, I mean, I'm brand new to it, you know, mm -hmm. I've introduced myself to galleries and, uh, I'm trying to get to know them, but it's, I think I don't know. I mean, I look to people like you who explain a lot of things about well, the art you. market and I really do. I feel like I learn an awful lot from you. Um, I don't, I don't know anybody else and I'm sure there's many people in my situation mm -hmm. who don't you know, galleries aren't looking at their MFA show or something, you know, which is what I believe is kind of a typical path. And then they meet other artists their age and, and so forth. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of coming in, you know, <laughs> a bit later. Yeah. So I don't, I, I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be seen. At, I mean, I've gotten a little notice on Instagram. Jerry Saltz featured me one time, which was nice. Nice. And then, Nice. It, it, I was very pleased. And then uh, also um, Caledonia Curry, you know, she picked one of my images for, for uh, her Heliotrope Foundation for a fundraiser. So I just hope people notice me, you know. Yeah. I don't know any suggestions. I am happy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the art. What, are, what have you been working mm -hmm. on? What's, sure. what's going on in that studio of yours? You know, we always check I'm turning around. Ooh, yeah, that looks beautiful. I've seen that. Is that the that's the one you had close up on? Oh, wow. Yeah. I love so, that. Oh, thank you. So this is called here. I'm trying to back up so I can get the whole thing in. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a painting I just finished and it's called Paranoid at the Party. And I had shown <laughs> the left side of it. And it's kind of funny right now, considering all the paranoia that's out there. Yeah. And wanting to keep your distance. But um, I just wanted to paint about um, my uh, anxiety struggles when I was younger. Mm -hmm. and, and people didn't really talk about it when I was that age the way they do now. I mean, if I was at a party and said I had anxiety, everybody would be like, me too, dude. You know, mm -hmm. But it's not mm -hmm. like that anymore. You know, it wasn't like that then. And so uh, I spent a lot of time... Uh, just trying to keep it together. And so I'm kind of trying to show that, you know, that I'm just like so nervous and everybody else seems to be having a better time in, in my mind, you know? So I, I kind of look at it, it's interesting, like in the way the colors switch and also the pattern. So you explain mm -hmm. in that story, does the pattern behind you with the green almost symbolize a state of like yes. confusion? Yes, you you got it. I mm. wanted it to feel agitated, mm, kind of mm -hmm. like uh, just you know that that they're kind of in a pink bubble glow, and there I am, mm -hmm. like feeling agitated. Yeah, yeah. And what about the pink? Does the does the pink come off to you as more of a uh, somber color instead of the opposite when people usually use pink to brighten things up does that in this sense come off as more somber because it seems like you know mm -hmm. the the party which usually would be under a bright light is kind of mm -hmm. dimmed you know like, yes mm. I think um, I, I, I mean uh, you see my my palette is pretty high usually and mm -hmm. I think it does um, I think one of the things that uh, my work is kind of showing that you can be happy on the outside and mm -hmm. feeling something more significant. Um, so that's, that's really part, I mean, I'm just drawn to bright colors, but mm -hmm. I also think if you can use them to create a psychological mood, I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Is that, is, is, is there a reason why you almost you cornered off the character as well? Because if you look at the dimensions in the painting, that your your subject is taking up so little, you know, yeah. of that space, you know, right. and and it almost seems like you're using, you know, um, 
everything as like is like is that an, it gives me kind of like a question like is that an empty cup you know is the cigarette lit you know mm -hmm. like does the belt you know seem like are you tightening or are you loosening up? like you know what i mean like there's so many different yeah. um questions in the background like you know in using the way you use color you know like mm -hmm. what are you seeing in the stripes you know why why that motion is that you know, uh, a friend of yours, you know, that's enjoying the party while you stay in the in the other room or in the kitchen, you know, almost yeah. um, shy to go in, you know, it's like. Yeah, I think it's, it's all those it's, things. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think I'm just trying to feel, trying to show so many of us have felt left out, whatever that, mm -hmm. whatever causes that feeling somebody else mm -hmm. seems like they're having the good life and i think um i was just trying to indicate that this couple on the left they're kind of the you know i would have said when i was that age kind of the preppy beautiful couple and that was just very mm -hmm. much not mm -hmm. me and uh mm -hmm. you know so like the football player and the homecoming queen type or something you know Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I was just not that girl and I just really uh you know wanted to paint the emotion of how that feels especially when you you're not comfortable in your own skin so I do think like the belt mm -hmm. um I have a little blouse gaping there mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. just like a little tummy bulge just like regular awkwardness you know mm-hmm mm-hmm and it's very interesting how you can express so much, you know, in, in little movements, the more you detail and get into a painting. And like, yeah. how, how long did this painting take? Did this take over um, a, a, a significant amount of time? Or was this something that you felt during a period and, and then, you know, backed off of it or something that, you know, like, is it? Yeah, I have to say, like, it's really hard to judge how long something takes. So, like, mm -hmm. have I been working on it? I think six weeks or something. But how many hours in those days? I don't know. Because yeah. it's been my time has been really broken up with a lot of different things. So, um, you know, I mm -hmm. I would say, you know, generally a painting, if you just talked about the hours I spend on a painting, it might be something like three weeks. Yeah, I didn't, I guess I didn't mean like the, you know, each, each work takes its own amount of time, but I meant like, yeah. you know, being inside of this thought, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, this thought? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well. Because I, I assume that you have to, you know, get into, you know, that type, that just thinking about what would be in the surroundings, you know, how would, how would the subjects look, feel, you know, what would yes. they evolve, you know what I mean? So being yeah, in so, that state, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I do a lot of kind of pre-thinking. Mm -hmm. And then when I get the idea, I do like a very tiny thumbnail mm -hmm. and see if the composition works. And then I uh, take selfies and look through old photos of myself and I look on um, uh, the internet for mm -hmm. supplementary photos. And then that sometimes gives me details that I think will add and everything. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and then it's just, then once I go forward, it's pretty much going forward. Once yeah. I do all that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Can I show you another one? Please that I'm do. Working on? Please do. Okay. And if anybody's listening, have any questions, like, you can definitely ask questions. There's a questions thing down here. I'll get to them. Um, we'll ask, we'll talk. Please feel free to engage as well. Um, that's, that's beautiful. Thank um, you. Wow. So this is like another one talking about, um, and this is uh, in progress, but I'm mm -hmm. actually not doing that much more to it. It's not going to change very much. Mm -hmm. um, this one is called uh, Disassociation at Dinner. Mm. And this is, um, this is me with my parents, actually, when I was in college. And I did have, like, serious depression right then. Mm -hmm. And i trying to show that, like, you could be having a conversation with somebody and, and kind of just leave your body and not feel uh, like you can 
be mm -hmm. in the moment anymore with them, you know? Wow. It almost, it almost seems like you're, you're, you're in repetition. Like, like right. I, gotta, I gotta do this again. You know what I mean? Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm coming back to this table again to explain something that, you know, everybody should know they should see, you know what I mean? But again, yeah. I'm repeating, you know, these same movements. And it's almost yeah. like you're revisiting that again. Like that's, yeah. it's almost in a sense like, um, not like a bar scene, you know, uh, but like, mm -hmm. you know, like, and almost like interrogation. You oh, know what I, mean? I see why you say that. I see why you say that. That's very interesting. You know, like, because it's like, your mom has this cigarette, you know, it's kind of like yeah. the black background. And it's almost like the way you have the light on everyone's face, it seems like it's spotlighted yeah. almost on your character. Right, right. It is, I, I think that is um, kind of that feeling, you know, when people have anxiety or, or this issue, lots mm -hmm. of times they over inflate their, what people are observing in them, mm -hmm. you know? So I think it was a little bit like that. Like I was just too, uh, uh, felt too um, exposed and also like I couldn't communicate, you know, like mm -hmm. I was cut off. And so um, anyway, I, I'm, I wanted to show because I have uh, anxiety and depression run in the family and I just mm. wanted to show um, uh, that it's that, you know, my mother had it and I, some of my paintings deal with her issues Mm -hmm. And my kids, you know, and, and it's like, oh, well, it, it didn't stop, you know, it's not just the other generations, you know, I had it too. Yeah. And so I just wanted to show my, when I had um, problems, you know. Yes, definitely. Is there a um, reason why you always seem to have empty glasses or empty cups? Oh, oh. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> because like, you know, in the first two paintings, you know, it's like, You're it's right. always that, that cup. Yeah. You know, is it almost course. like, it's yeah. like, it's like, it's almost about to spill, but then it's, it seems yeah. like this one is empty. Like, is there something uh, that, you know, you're looking at I'm with smarter that smarter than I thought. Like, oh. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting to see because that's, it's always, you know, that cup, that cup yeah. seems yeah. to enter, yeah. you know, at least in the first two paintings. You yeah, know? right. I, no, I appreciate that. I, I guess um, I, I didn't really think about it, but I'll have to tell you, like, in my family and in my uh, just life growing up, there was plenty of drinking. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there would always be a glass around for sure. So... Interesting. That's the, yeah. Um, the, these are the two new paintings I have here. And then the other paintings I have today um, are, are um, ones that are on my oh, that's nice. website. But this is um, my older daughter. I'm going to back up so you can see it a little better. Okay. There. So nice. I hope that's okay. So yeah, yeah, she, wow, she's that very perspective is interesting. She's very clingy to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and one of the other themes, because of her anxiety, but one of the other themes I explore is that, um, you know, uh, motherhood is always depicted in art as so idyllic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, when when you have somebody die in your life and they like your relationship wasn't 100% fantastic. They call mm -hmm. that complicated grief. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I would say that motherhood often can be what I would call complicated love mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's, you're not going to get exactly um, the response from your children. Maybe you want all the time or everything isn't going to be 100% smooth, no matter how much mm -hmm. you love them. 
And yeah. I'm just trying to show, you know, that it's, that there's some reality to it. You know, it's not just um, uh, cuddling a baby, <laughs> no, you know. Really. Is that, is, is that the reason why the perspective is an incline? To where it's yes. almost like you're bringing, you know, you're continuously going up. A, it's an uphill battle, you know, in a sense. Yeah, I was trying to, I, I think that's a good way to describe it. My my thoughts were just that it we weren't in balance, you know, that mm. we weren't, that I'm kind of, she's kind of pulling on me. And it's hard for me to to be in balance when that's happening. So... I was trying to show mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm looking and looking around to see if there's any glasses. <laughs> or any I know. I'm like, oh, there's a table. Maybe I should put a glass yeah, on there. Yeah, that's why I was looking around. Like, oh, okay. Let me see if any draw of any connections. So what's 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 the um? Should I keep going? The, no, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just kind of like interested. In, like, what's the back? Like, what's the interesting? With it seems like greens your favorite color in these works to where it's like used as a very defining color. Is there a mm -hmm. relationship with you toward the color green at all? I do think I'm just very attracted to it, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it, um, I, I, I am just attracted to it. I, and I think that would be all I can say about it is that yeah. I, I find it to be, um, you know, it can describe so many things, obviously, mm -hmm. nature, poisonous, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, could be happy or, or chaotic or, you know, you can do a lot with green, I think. Most definitely. Most definitely. Sweet. So and next. I wanted to show this painting too. Should we talk about this one or? Yes, let's talk. Yes, let's. Okay. Wait, so, yeah, that's. Yet someone coming in that your greens are so unsettling. I agree. <laughs> I agree. They they spark up a they spark up tension, you know, and almost you know help to tell the story. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like an action color. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I appreciate that. Sweet. Wow. So this painting is called "Hide All the Sharp Objects." Oh, I remember you telling me about this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's basically, you know, um, people will tell you if you, if somebody's depressed in your life that mm -hmm. you should hide the sharp objects so that they don't feel tempted to hurt themselves. But mm -hmm. the thing is, is, is that's, that's a impossible task there. There's no way to hide all the sharp mm -hmm. ob objects in the world and protect, um, protect anyone you know yeah we we can only do so much so this this painting was about just feeling um overwhelmed by that like by trying to protect my family and and uh just hoping you know that um that just just how that that affected me i really try to paint about my thoughts about mm -hmm. my situation and not really what anyone else in my family is going through. Definitely. And it's almost makes you think like when you say sharp objects, you know, they don't necessarily have to actually be real life objects, you know, a sharp object That's could be, true. you know, an incident in life or, you know, something that causes a drastic shift in the way your career goes or the way you see the world or however. So I think that's a very interesting painting because it's almost like the orange is identifying the physical nature of what you're talking about, but then the green gives you the hypothetical nature, you know, of those right. same, you know, um, you know, unseen, you know, um, daggers and sharp objects that you might encounter in life. So I think that's very powerful. It's very interesting, you know, especially you. Al alongside the actual reason for the painting, you know what I mean? Yes. And I, I, I agree, um, and I appreciate what you say. I have always hoped that even if somebody wasn't having an identical situation to what I'm painting about, that it mm -hmm. could touch a nerve for mm -hmm. for any viewer, you know, because mm -hmm. we all do have our struggles, and, you know, maybe sometimes we really feel like we're fighting, you know, all these things coming at us or... Yeah. 
you know, that kind of thing. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. All right. Should I show you the next one then? Yep. Let's do it. Okay. So this one, uh, I got to really back up because it's wide. This one is on my website and I wanted to show it just because oh, that one's sideways. <laughs> it's sideways now. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Oh, um, it's a lot of pink, but do you see a floating baby? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is actually, this of course is based on life and, um, mm -hmm. My parents, their first baby was a stillborn boy, and that was mm. the only boy they ever had. And my dad was the youngest in his family, so that was kind of like the end of the family name, if you want to put it that way. And um, the thing is, is that we, even at that age and younger, we always knew that my parents had lost their first baby and we really felt their grief mm -hmm. and so this is just for me this is another we're obviously we're praying around and that was my bed we used to pray around my bed every night mm -hmm. and um i'm just showing or i hope i'm showing that uh life events impact for a long time they don't just uh you know you do move on, but they, you know, we were little kids and we could see our parents still grieving, even though they mm -hmm. had children, you know, so <laughs> wow. live children. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think the, the boldness of the pink really brings out, you know, every, is that, is that your dad? You know, the yeah. figure right there. Yeah. So uh, for some, I don't really uh, know why other than like a division of, of parenting, parenting duties. But um, mm -hmm. my dad was the one who always said prayers with us. Wow. Wow. And what's the significance of the, I, I'm guessing that's your sister, laying there with the elephant on, yeah. the, on the bed? Yeah, that's just her stuffed animal. Um, but it's, I but guess I was just... did she not like those times? I think, I think we all kind of felt, I want to say too, like um, religion plays a role because mm -hmm. uh, we were raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. And when my mother had this baby they had her see a priest and the priest was was very cruel to her and told her mm. that the baby was they used to call it a monster and mm. would go to limbo and would not go to could not wow. be baptized i know harsh right <laughs> and uh uh so since we um, were saying these prayers every night and Yet we also knew this story of this priest being so cruel to my mother. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think any of us ever got on board with the Catholic Church. Wow. Uh, the three girls, our three girls, you know, even though they tried to raise us that way. Um, well, that's one one reason. But let's just say we got off on a bad foot. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like that's the proverbial elephant in the room. There you go. <laughs> interesting wow wow yeah. wow that is wow just the observation it's not too much or any green in this one it almost takes the opposite because mm -hmm. you know like in the first painting when you had the pink the pink almost seemed um as if like a void, something you didn't want to enter. And now you, yes. you know, say with this, it's almost like, you, it's, it's almost like a, a, like that space is something like you didn't want to do. You know what I mean? Like, yes. at least that's how it's coming off to me. It's like, you know, like, 
almost even with the repeating, you know, the repetition of having to go in the, in the second painting, having to continuously go to the table to have this conversation. And then then mm -hmm. the every night with the with the prayers, you know, and things like it's almost like that pink is representative of like, uh, oh, I have to do this again or oh man, mm -hmm. I have to face this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I think I was thinking of here we are three girls and that was their one boy mm. and so i was really thinking about the pink and blue in that term and also um the title of this painting is still blue meaning mm -hmm. you know that my parents were still sad and also thinking about their their son slash non-son you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wow. <laughs> yeah, that's it's deep, especially when you when you have the story with it, because you you start to look at the different uh, the positioning of things and you know the perspective and you know the bed in this way almost looks like a hill, you know, just like the painting when you're going up the incline, you know, mm -hmm. so it almost looks like you know the the third sister or the the sister with the elephant, you know, is almost trying to get up it too. You know what I mean? Trying yeah. To get up on the bed, or you know, it's 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 so many different ways you could take a look at it, and it's very interesting, especially aligned with the story. Wow. Thank you. And then I just have one more painting. Yeah, if of you course. Want one more. This is also on my website. I'm backing up, oh, so. Nice. Yeah, I remember seeing this one. Yeah. So. That also um, is from when I was in college, I uh, had a lot of sleep issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I yeah, <laughs> and I really did um, wake up once and I feel like I was on the ceiling. So wow. whether I've, I've heard different explanations for that, but I just thought I would paint it. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't really notice it until you said that, like how the distance and perspective, you're actually higher. Yeah. You know, than, uh, wow. Okay. Because at first, when I first seen it and looked at it, you know, it looks like, you know, you're laying on, um, you know, a bed and everything just seems, you know, normal. But then after you explain that, it's like, wow, okay, I can, I can see that the subject is elevated. Right, right. There's the bed below me, and I'm up by the light, by the ceiling light. Yeah. Wow. And what does the purple signify in this? Um, honestly, I didn't have any, except any deep, uh, deep intention there. Mm -hmm. But I do, purple is a color associated with spirituality. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would say, like, in my mind, what happened is that I had a, like, a near-death experience, so, mm. um, but I, Someone, yeah. someone also asked that your character mostly has on a blue shirt, and is there any significance in that? There really isn't. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I'm noticing that now, too. See, isn't it funny when you put them all <laughs> together, you see things maybe you never thought about before. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just, I mean, even when she said that, I just noticed that. It's like, whoa, okay, yeah. Like, so it always does have a, mm -hmm. a blue shirt on. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's interesting to see. So, like what do you do you did you have a space in mind of is that supposed to be college or is that like every day or is in, in this is my bedroom mm -hmm. when i the bedroom i grew up in mm. and is there a reason why you wanted to be above that or leave that or raise above oh, I, I did want to leave it <laughs> mm -hmm. i think we all do at some point <laughs> you know yeah but in that I, sense it almost is like you're raising above it, but then it kind of shocks you as if you're either falling down or you're going up too high. I was in this experience I had, I woke up right when I would have hit the ceiling. Oh, wow. So I was shocked. 
And uh, that is why I'm like bracing myself against, you know, what I thought, I thought I was dying. So, uh, wow. yeah. Is that like the refrigerator opened and? No, open? there's just like a little nightstand and then a bed below me. And then, mm. oh, that door, that's yeah. just the door to the oh, hallway. Oh, that's the, that's the hallway. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I was like looking from here, it almost it looked like that was like a a fridge and then like a sink. Uh huh. Oh, I can see why you say that. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and it was almost like, like, are you trapped inside? You know, like isolation, ah. incarceration. You know, that's what I was looking like. Whoa. Yeah. Like, is everything like you know super? Is like trapped inside of it, and mm -hmm. the only the only non-solid color is like the rug, you know, the only difference. Yeah. You know, is there, was there anything that, you know, about the rug that you saw that kind of like changed or broke up the monotony of bold in the painting? I, well, it's, it's true to life. Like the, in terms of, I did have a little Oriental rug in my bedroom, mm -hmm. but um, I did, also not want to uh have everything just a solid color so mm -hmm. yeah i just uh wanted it there for composition i guess you would say wow what size is that one that is um 48 by 72 wow wow mm -hmm. that is cool that well, thank cool. you. That thank you. Cool. <laughs> I think so, everyone else thinks they're cool too. So they're very, oh, very cool. Thank you. Like they are. So what do you have, uh, you know, what are you looking forward to while you still have the time and all of that? And, you know, with everything going on and, you know, all of this new opportunity um, to, you know, even reach out. I'm, it's funny, like I talked about it last uh, talk where, you know, I was planning a few of these talks before and it kind of hit, you know, right in time ah, to be doing yes. this. So it's like... You were prescient that yeah, way. Yeah, it just happened to, like, it was just, like, divine, you know? And, and how has this new, I guess, new normal, how is that prepping you for when we eventually come out of this? Like, are you doing something to where you'll continue doing things digitally and or you'll try to just focus more on your physical works when you come out of it and being ready, rested and ready to go? Or how does, how do you see your approach changing? Oh, I mean, isn't that interesting? I wonder if everybody will feel like there's a flood coming then, mm. a flood of creativity, a tsunami. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just am going to make hay while I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do as much as I can, and hopefully there will be a day where there can be more gallery visits and and studio visits in person and and that'll um, just generate some shows or something i'm hoping what's the what's the biggest thing you're looking forward to once everything goes you know back to quote unquote normal? Just visiting a gallery, a museum, working with artist friends. What's like the first thing you think you'll do? I just would love to get out and see some art. It yeah. just feels like my lifeblood. And it mm -hmm. feels, I mean, I love looking at it online, but it's just not, Yeah. it's not the same energy wise, you not know. Not the same at all. I see you feel that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's why, yeah. you know, like, that's why I wanted to do these because I usually do like three or four studio visits a week, you know, in person with, you know, wow. with artists and, you know, just because the museum yeah. and the gallery doesn't always give you what an artist is really truly working on. And the conversations that you can have about the works in the studio is much different than the conversation uh -huh. around an exhibition or around um, a museum collection, because you're actually getting to talk to the person who created it, share your ideas. And, you know, just like seeing you get to bounce off different ideas that maybe you might mm -hmm. have not, not have seen, you know, and everyone else can ask questions, you know, 
and it kind of brings a dialogue to where we can look at the work in a different way and actually really um, get a little bit more detail, you know, things that we can't really do um, in museums and galleries because we're always so much in a rush, you know, we're usually trying to get a good photo of it before someone gets in a way or, you know, know. there's just know. You know, a lot of people to where we can't really enjoy it, you know, the way we it's want true. to. So studio visits are always like, my go-to I, I i'm very grateful for anyone that allows me in the studio and very grateful to you for allowing us into the studio <laughs> and to see and you're just, kidding i'm so thrilled you like, called me i like mean this, i love it i love doing this thank you like this was awesome so like i i appreciate it i thank you so much and thank you thank everybody you. that you know yes, came and joined us today who came. Appreciate and um it. yeah like it will uh you can always add your comments and questions under Amy's post on the timeline and we'll make sure we get them to her. So just in case you guys have any questions and thank you, thank Amy, you. again. And so thank you all you. so much. So I hope great I to see, see you, you in person soon. Yes, we'll see you soon as all this craziness goes yeah. back to normal, whatever that is. So Okay. Thank all you. All right, guys. See you, Amy. Have a good one. See ya. Bye -bye. You too. Bye-bye.